Imagine you could turn back time. <laughs> I wish. Welcome! Very good to see you again. I hope the new year has been pleasant so far. Last time, we ended with creating a sample world using our entity component system. Today we have some exciting stuff to do. We will start working on basic editor tools that allow us to create and manipulate geometry in runtime, save and load the world. And without further ado, let's go! Uh... So, what do we need to create some basic editing tools? Well, first, we need a user interface, which fortunately is already set up for use in my C++ engine in the form of open source their IMG UI library. We just need to build the UI that will call the functions to create entities, components, and link them together. Even if our architecture is different from object-oriented architectures, using the editor should feel exactly the same as any well-established game engine, simple and intuitive. For now, I will take the approach of the world owning its own UI, but this likely should be separated into a completely different layer. Let's talk a bit how the IMG UI library works. On a high level, it is very simple. We call a start of a frame and an end of a frame. The UI itself can be built anywhere in the code between the start and the end. Simple, right? IMG UI is very well documented and you can easily find anything you want to do online. I created a class called World Hierarchy that will be responsible for managing the world and displaying the information. We want to begin with the most basic thing, adding and removing objects in runtime. Some coding later, I had a working prototype that could create and delete entities using buttons, allowing me to select and manipulate entities, except for one little problem of it crashing during deletion. I went into depth about this problem in my ECS implementation in the previous video, so if you have not yet watched it, feel free to do so. It took me a bit to work things out, and now I had an actual working prototype that did not crash. Great! Technically, this is already an editor, just with one major flaw. If we shut down the application, all of our progress is gone. And this <laughs> is where we come to the more interesting part of the video, saving and loading. In essence, Saving is capturing an application at a specific time and saving its state. On the opposite, loading is reading that data and restoring the original application state. Everything I will do here could be done in any C++ application, even yours. Saving and loading is the most crucial thing not only in game engines, but in a lot of different applications. There are many ways to achieve this, but we will go with a solution called serialization, which is most commonly used for games. This is just a fancy way of saying we are going to use a text or binary files to write and read data. I haven't done anything like this before, so I initially went with very low expectations for myself. Of course, I won't be implementing everything myself, since there are countless libraries to do this in C++. As always, I did some research about the libraries that are open source and could be used in my project. I landed with a choice between two very popular libraries called Boost and Serial. Serial was in my opinion more simple to use, and people online seemed to like it more, so I went with it. Before we even get to the code, I have to say, this was the first time that I chose a library and everything worked from the start. This Serial is absolutely delicious, it functions like this. For any object, you can define how this object should be serialized. If saving and loading is the same, only one function is enough and the library just automatically loads the data back. I wish I could explain how this works, but I honestly have no idea. If you need to change something in the saving or loading process, you can separate the functionality into save and load functions, giving you more control. Usually this is needed during loading. The serialization works by saving name, value pairs to a file, though names are really useful for debugging purposes and I will later explain why. It took me a while to set up the code because I needed to provide serialization instructions for all my types and my entity component system, fortunately, everything worked the first time. Because we are loading worlds, we can't really manage the whole loading process in the world class, and this is where I introduce you to our new class that manages all of the worlds. 
the universe class. The world saving and loading process starts and completes in the universe. Currently only one world is supported, but it could be multiple worlds if we want to support additive world loading for example. The world has the ECS system, so it loads entities, components, IDs, etc. Anything we need to fully restore the world. And that's it. We provide an output file, and here it is, our world saved in a readable format. The saved file isn't too large in size, but let's try saving a sphere this time. Uh oh, almost a megabyte. Even if the library provides us with everything we need to save the data, we still need to use our brain. Where does the massive size of the file come from? Well, it's because we are saving all of the vertices, which our primitive sphere has almost a thousand of. The main question is, how do we solve this? Let's first think about what should be saved in the first place. A save file should contain a minimal amount of data that allows us to recreate what has been saved, and we definitely do not want to save all of the vertices to know that we saved a sphere. We could instead save the type of geometry, in this case a sphere, or if the mesh is a loaded model, we could save the path to that model. I implemented some static functions that will allow us to create meshes, get vertices, and indices for primitives. Now, based on the saved type, we will recreate the mesh during loading opposed to reading it from file, and we got down to 3 kilobytes for saving all 4 currently available primitives, and we can still make it better. I mentioned previously that the names of the fields are only useful for debugging. The file currently contains variable names which are only useful for a human to read because the serialization functions have the order of the components that were saved. There is no real need for us to know what the names of the values are assigned to because we will not be reading the file anyway. Instead of using a JSON archive, in the serial library, the mode can be switched to binary. We won't be able to read the file, but this removes any data intended for humans. If we want to debug, we can always switch the loading mode back to JSON. So where does this get us? Seven hundred bytes. Nice. Not even a kilobyte of data. With one little modification, we managed to reduce the size about a thousand times. This was smooth, and the progress was satisfying despite the low effort. At least, that's what I think. Some of you likely would be able to optimize this even further, and if so, please let me know in the comments. The rest of the video was meant to be me talking about the project structure and future plans. I briefly mentioned in the beginning that the world possibly should not own its own UI, and I fell into a bit of a rabbit hole, revealing much more fundamental problems with this project that the UI question is only a tiny part of. This is a complicated topic, so I will make a separate video on this. In short, I want the project to become a bit more serious and set up a proper structure, starting with a plan on how to implement it, and what a better way to do this than visiting some old games. I'll be seeing you soon! As always, thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video and maybe even learned something new. See ya! Well... Doesn't look like help is coming, so I might as well just keep digging. Imagine you could turn back time.